I wonder how important that moral support has been to keeping the Ukrainian people's spirits up, keeping their resistance up. OK, I mean, the first thing is, without a weapon, you can't fight. So the critical thing is weaponry and supplies. And although they have a lot of small arms, a lot of um, assault rifles, or Kalashnikovs of various varieties, and I'm sure a great deal of ammunition, what they lacked was battle-winning kit. Um, they had some drones, but one should not overestimate how many drones they had. They only had about 24, I think, at the start of this war, and it may be that they've had more purchased or have um, purchased more themselves. Uh, and those are the relatively cheap Turkish drones, TB2s. Um, the other battle-winning kit that they've got is the, the javelins and the in-laws, as we know from ourselves and from the Americans. Um, so that is great to have that. But clearly the morale um, and the sense of Western support, I think, is critically important as well. And the sense also of national unity in Ukraine. So I think these things help keep people on the front line, help keep people motivated, help feel that when you're down, there is a purpose to what you're doing when you're cold and scared and frankly hungry. It's remarkable seeing what we have been able to do thus far as the West, potentially not many people expecting the scale of sanctions, certainly Mr Putin not expecting the scale of sanctions that we have seen. Some very public, others uh, more pernickety to do with banking institutions, but those are the ones that are really biting when it comes to Russia. I wonder how much further can the United Kingdom actually go on sanctions? Um, I, I mean, I, I, the, the problem is with all this stuff, it's all slightly guesswork. So we think that sanctions may have an effect. But um, let's just, I, I think we, we should wait and see what the evidence suggests, because sanctions only have a purpose if they persuade a people or a government to change course. And if you read, as I've been doing, the, the obituaries of some of these Russian soldiers coming in, there is no sense, I don't see any sense on their social media that they were sold this, um, this operation on a falsehood. I think there is a, officially, at any rate, a reasonable amount of unity, it seems, clearly across government state media because it's all controlled by the state but also what we see in social media. So I would just hold off on assuming that sanctions are going to be working. Sanctions work when they have a political effect, not when there is a shortage of goods or industry is slowing down. So your assessment, therefore, is a more bleak one when it comes to the willingness of the Russian people to see their government for what it is, to potentially change their government's direction. Your assessment is that the Russian people buy into Mr. Putin's words? I'm not saying they buy into. I, I just think there's a lot of either acceptance. Putin in the last 20 years has built a regime which is pretty, imper which is pretty impervious to democratic pressure, to street protests, the so-called colour revolutions that he despises. And so he has built a government, he has built an operating regime that is impervious to democratic accountability. Uh, and that includes stuffing, you know, ballot boxes all the way through to beating up protesters, all the way through to state control of major energy firms, or most of them, uh, and also state control or state uh, censorship over the, the mainstream media. So he has built up a a very, very resistant state. And I think it's going to take an awful lot to shift that. And I, and I think that our ability to press either the people of Russia and to persuade them or to press the government, you know, we've got to accept is reasonably limited. Um, mm. Just finally here, they, Bob, yeah. as a member of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee, what's your view on conditional sanctions? As negotiations go on, the idea that the United Kingdom may offer to relieve some sanctions in exchange for certain withdrawals or political ends? Uh, it, it depends. OK, it depends what the, the order is. If this comes during a process, no, because the Russians are very aggressive no negotiators and they'll pocket that and just move on in the same way that all the land they pocket now is going to be hugely difficult to get back from them. Um, if, that, if that conditional stuff happens at the end of a process, in a big bang moment when everything is in place, that might work rather better. Um, so uh, it very much depends on, the, on how negotiations proceed uh, and how successful they are. But negotiations for the Russians are part of this war. And to see that negotiations happen after fighting stops is to misunderstand the way that the Russians deal with warfare and, and uh, confrontation.